do this. Let's do this. We got this. Welcome to Talk Tennis. We are on site at the BMP Paribas Open in Indian Wells, California. Dennis Fabian, you are joining us from the head stringing room. You are like the center of all the action that's not on the practice courts. And on the courts, this is all the all the other action happens here, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. How's it going so far this week? Oh, it's super busy. Like the guys are doing a tremendous job here in the room. We have this year we have 12 machines, 11 stringers, so one one spare machine basically for emergencies. Just in case. Just in <laughs> case something happens. Um, actually, we are up again with numbers. Um, usually what you see over the past two, three years, like every tournament you have like five to 10% more rackets. This year here, we actually see nearly 20% more rackets, wow. which brought these guys into, let's call it a little bit of trouble. Um, it's, it was long days so far, long hours, but yeah. like everyone managed it really well. And like the quality these guys are delivering to the players is outstanding. And well, without the work in this room, like not a lot of tennis would be played out there, right? Like, so. Yeah. So, so my kudos to the team here. Yeah. <laughs> they rock. They're, they're working away right now as we get a chat it up. Um, why do you think all of a sudden there's an uptick in restringing? on the tour? I think overall like um, that, that players get more sensitive and what the actual like s the right string tension, um, having the right elasticity of the string all the time, what it can do to your game and also prevent injuries. I mean having freshly strung rackets consistently it gives you just a better sense of how you hit the ball. Uh, the string doesn't go dead as we say. Uh, which means that like you prevent elbow issues or shoulder issues, wrist issues. Mm -hmm. Polyester, like more and more players are, as we all know, like they either play hybrid or they play full bed polyester. There's yeah. no, I don't think there's any player anymore that plays a full set of na uh, natural gut or uh, like a full set of any synthetic gut or multifilament string. So, yeah. And even on the women's side, in the past it was really so that, that women, dropped less rackets like okay. one or two for a match yeah and i also increased which is actually good to see yeah for sure and in the past we started seeing more hybrid strings and then we started seeing poly poly hybrids what is there are there any trends that you're seeing yet not not much has changed here like it's the same it's the same still those guys who are like playing natural gut and and poly strings um full poly setups what we see is like a little bit lower tensions partly okay with uh, some players actually pre-stretching um the monofilament strings as well mm -hmm. which gives them more control it's a little bit more a dead feeling of the string bed that makes sense. i would definitely not recommend this to a regular mm -hmm. consumer unless that consumer also restrings as many times as a pro player <laughs> every two hours because <laughs> making yeah because making making a, a polyester string or monofilament string pre-stretch here like you take the elasticity out of it like basically so careful <laughs> yeah yeah and um i don't know it seems like there's been we always kind of have those highs and lows on tour we've got like manorinos always stringing super low and then I've, I've started to hear some more people creeping up into the high 50s has there been anything weird this week there is <laughs> so one of our stringers mike actually he came up to me and said like what's the highest tension we can get on the machine i was, I oh, was no. irritated for a <laughs> second and then i remember there's one woman on tour she at every stringing service globally she goes like do the highest tension your machine can do plus 10 percent pre-stretch oh my goodness so we were yesterday and i think we were at 95 pounds <laughs> so it's it's difficult sometimes because also the string like once the grommet is a little bit worn down or so like it you really get it to the limit right that's crazy it's what's interesting because like after those tournaments and stuff i always try at home as well like s those kind of extremes that yeah. super low tension or that super high some strings if you overstretch them to the absolute limit actually they they seem to overcome like a peak and mm -hmm. then it becomes nice again yeah but different than if you play the same string on lower tension yeah. so it's kind of interesting that is interesting chris has been talking to me a lot about how there's this weird um fine line when dropping tension too mm -hmm. depending on like how far it goes it can get really bad and then you like find it again so yeah. i mean i'm not an engineer but like um what 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 we know it's the vibration of the string Bed. Yeah. So like once the ball hits the string bed, it, it also depends like on the string bed, the racket obviously, but it has its own frequency. So it's over the tensions, the various tensions are always different. So it's interesting. Some strings behave very well in like low tensions. Some you have to 
string tighter. That makes sense, yeah. Okay, well, we've I think we've covered the string room, unless there's anything else that we need to know. Any drama going on? What's happening? Let's so give us no, tea. No, <laughs> no, no, no one's real fighting. drama. No, no. <laughs> no, unfortunately, no, no real string room gossip or anything. Not yet. It's no still rumors, early. No. <laughs> we didn't have any marriages or whatever. In there, like so, it's fine. Do you have any women stringers? Yes, on the team? we have women stringers. Yes, sure, we do. I love that. Okay, yeah. it is and International we Women's like, Day today. We, exactly, and so we also have out. Tatum out of our US team. She's okay. like a big part of of the crew, running the front desk with the two other guys. Nice, so, yeah. awesome. Yeah, always I women involved. Let's Come go. On. <laughs> go ladies. <laughs> okay, well, um, it's let's talk about these beautiful bright rackets in front of us. The new Head Extreme. Yep. How long has it been since we've seen the Extreme get an update? Uh, well, usually we do every two years, basically, where we give an update. This racket will, like, as you know, like launch this July. Okay. So it's going to come out, and um, yeah, there is. We have done some some work on on all the frames, restructured the collection by model. Okay. Uh, which is actually pretty important for the consumer to know. I actually wanted to ask you about the heritage of the extremes because. When did it come into the lineup for Head, and how many iterations is this? You should have prepared me for that <laughs> question, Michelle. To be honest with you, <laughs> Felix. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's like I'm with Head now since 2017. Since then, we had three iterations, so this is the fourth iteration. Okay. Before that, it already was in existence. So I like unfortunately can't tell you the exact date. That's okay. But we have had a couple a couple generations yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about the most obvious thing first. Who pick this cosmetic how did you guys decide on this beautiful color oh we, i mean we are always challenging and i think i mentioned it on multiple podcasts already and interviews that like we always try to challenge ourselves and we want to set like new standards and like looking into what's happening right now with in the industry and stuff we said like the extreme by its name it should be some sort of extreme mm -hmm. the yellow always was connected to the extreme the current one that is out there mm -hmm. got very good reviews on the cosmetics, but like people also complained a little bit that like it's not flashy enough. Yeah. And with our new four, po we call it 4.0 asymmetry, where we have the color block here in the center of mm -hmm. the frame. Uh, we wanted to do something that really stands out out of the collection, and if so, the extreme is one of the silos where that can take it and that can carry it yeah uh, from a from a game style from from just everything so yeah. it looks awesome but it wasn't easy to get it through within the internal teams really? and like yeah we do a lot of consumer research we show the rackets obviously internally then you look at it you look at it again like first impression second impression so but now the way it turned out with all the details the colors of the logo everything is like super like i i think it's it's going to be very well received hopefully yeah otherwise I think somebody so too. else will sit in the podcast next year <laughs> <laughs> no i know our team had a chance to hit these this morning and we all said that the cosmetic was awesome and then tell me about what has been updated in these rackets so we have now four models in the collection okay. so first and foremost what's important is that the previous um, Extreme Tour will be called the Extreme Pro. Okay. We have not changed the mold. Okay. It's the same. It's the same specs. What we have done is we have worked specifically on the layup, and we have specifically uh, we are using a different and new material within the grommet set. So, okay. like for us, it was very important across all models um, to improve the sound of the racket during impact mm -hmm. on fastballs and also on the slower, like the more touch. Uh, um, played strokes like a volley or like a stop. Um, we also wanted to keep, let's say, the, the benefits like the, the power and spin, that combination that the extreme delivers, yeah. um, which, is, which is really nice. We also wanted to keep that kind of crisp, crisper feedback, but we yeah. wanted to more subtle, more solid sound out of it. Like solid. we wanted to take the, I think some people describe it as being hollow or tinny. And we wanted to take that away from from the extreme. I feel like I just was attacked, and I probably used one of those words in a playtest video. Yeah, I guess so. Oh no! <laughs> um, Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> so what what we have right now is, as I said, four models, and that's how we are. Like we started with this with the speed this year. Um, you will also see it on the on the boom line. We we are trying to narrow down a little bit the models per silo, maybe color options like on the boom. What mm -hmm. you see right now. Um, but what we want to emphasize is basically 
We are very well known for our MP models, mm -hmm. right? So that, like that's always what we hear that like hey head is like kind of the very popular for its MP models. So we we um, we build a collection within every silo of MP light models, MPL. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone who loves the MP but wants a lighter version can get the exact same racket on a lower spec, like on a lower weight. That's perfect. And for the consumer on the team level, we try to narrow down the um, the options because sometimes it's very difficult. Which one should I take? Should I? play the 255 gram or 265 or 260 it's it's very niche right. so we wanted to make it easy and clean if you love the cosmetic if you want that extra power if you want that extra spin but you want a, like a slightly bigger head size lighter racket that's the team model for you okay so, and that's what we have here with the 105 square inch uh, nice. 680 square centimeters and like 265 grams so it's a Perfect. it's a nice range yeah. you got that let's say oversized model on team with 265, you go to the MPL with 100 square inch, 280 okay. grams. Okay. MP model, 300 grams, 100 square inch, and then the 97 with the 305 on the on the Pro. That's awesome. I think that's a great. I actually coach a girl that I put her in the extreme, the lightest of the extremes, and she's dialed in. She loves to hit with tons of spin. That's that's good to hear. Yeah. No, it's a yeah. great racket, and it's one that I know she can grow into the line. She'll be stoked on the new colors too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a powerful spin that that gets this racket basically like very popular. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Who are these rackets for? Let's, you know, maybe someone hasn't tried the extreme before. Why should they try it? So if you want that like uh, a little bit support in terms of the power for your game, uh, you also like uh, let's say more crisp feedback hitting mm -hmm. the ball rather than to that plush feeling mm -hmm. that you might get from a from a boom or even a speed racket. Um, and you want that extra spin to really, let's say, dictate your opponent with spin. Mm -hmm. Like you want to control the game with your spin. Okay. Like deep shots with like high bounce so and not a me. lot of rotation. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I'll stick with uh, the radical. <laughs> uh, I think that that's where this racket is for or that franchise is for. And who, who else, like who loves kind of like bold colors and, yeah. and wants to go for it. Uh, tell me more about these grommets. Yeah, it's like uh, one thing you notice to, to uh, like we wanted also to have the cosmetics visually appealing. So as easy as it sounds to do transparent grommets, it's not super easy actually, because uh, the material, the color parts, everything plays a role mm -hmm. when you mold this. And uh, we also experimented with different materials on, on the grommets and that's where we ended up and uh, the grommets itself, the spin grommets and, and everything that's included uh, in the extreme line, like do their extra to get it to the next level. Okay. And then Oxetic 2.0 is in this one, which Correct. we've seen that now in a lot of the rackets, yeah. all of the rackets. Yeah, that's, the that's, that's kind of our overarching technology. So um, we have uh, received a lot of good feedback from consumers about Oxetic that it kind of added a lot of touch and feel to the frame so we wanted to bring it to the next level mm -hmm. so it's added in actually in the bottom part of the handle as well the okay. technology so like you have a direct connect to your hand to your elbow so you feel it even more so mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of across all silos that Oxetic 2.0 is implemented and it actually like brings I, I mean we have seen it already on the speed and the feedback we got uh, people were very positive. We hear this already on the booms that are out there for people who already had the chance to try it. So, and I think this will also help for, for the extreme. I've uh, heard some feedback also, and a lot of people like that it kind of creates a solid feel without feeling too stiff. It's still a nice, very comfortable experience. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the the critical part. You you want a powerful racket, you yeah. want to deliver spin, but at the end, you don't want a racket that's boardy. Exactly. And like going too high in stiffness can create some weird sounds as well. And it, it's, it's obviously not great for your elbow. Uh, stiffer rackets can get a little bit more instable and in off-center hits, which we also don't want to have. Like Because what we're trying to accomplish throughout our entire collection is that really um, increase perceived stability. Like Meaning when you hit the ball, this torsional movement, that it becomes less or at least less perceived as negative. Right, right. And, and I know the RA values and stiffness is a lot out there. But it's one of many values on stiffness ratings on tennis rackets. So 
consumers shouldn't get irritated. What we have done throughout the Extreme Collection is we kind of streamlined the RA value, so to make it less confusing for the consumer. Okay. And when you were talking about these, the first time I ever heard you talk about them, you said that the playtest with your playtest crew was so positive and it was like, yeah, yeah talk to me about how that I went. mean, over the past, whatever, uh, decade or more, uh, I'm involved in, in racket development and stuff. You obviously do consumer testing, you do your internal testing, and then you kind of have, at some point you get to a stage where like there are two, three rackets that mm -hmm. are very n close by where you <laughs> need to decide which one is the one that you actually want to bring to market. Yeah. So you do like final testing with as many people out of the target group as you can, and you collect the data. And there is a very popular test, like the, the, we call the triangular test, where, you, where people do blind tests. If they really can see this is the one racket that is better, and like they get twice the same once they get another one. So it's <laughs> I like kinda, that. <laughs> kind, of, kind of interesting blind testing, so you can really see. With, in particular, on the MP, mm -hmm. it was really, we had 24 testers at one of the tests. 23 testers detected the new racket, loved the new racket over everything else we had in the test. And um, the one person that got, that got out of that mix, they couldn't find the differences, which, which can happen. But 23 out of 24 wow. is quite impressive, that's and really I haven't impressive. seen it. So that's where we were really confident now, like, OK, let's go for it. Nice. That, that's the one. That's awesome. And talk to me a little bit about the pros that are endorsing the extreme. We've got Bert Bertini on the head card. Correct. Um, I mean, hopefully he's coming back yeah. um, from his injuries. I think he had a tough, tough couple months uh, um, behind him, basically. And hopefully he's coming back with his forehand. He's a good representative of, of the entire extreme line. For sure. Uh, same is for Davidovich Fukina. Okay. Like he's, I mean, he's a good baseline grinder as well. Pretty cool guy with yeah. his two different socks. So like all this <laughs> lifestyle, fancy, like get through with this cosmetic as well. So, nice. Yeah. On the women's side, we have uh, Barbara Krajcikova. Okay. I mean, she won oh, she's pretty French, good. French Open with <laughs> yeah. it. She's uh, a, a big doubles champion, so she's representing that racket also very well. That's awesome. And I always love asking you, what are the best string setups in these new rackets when it comes to like all the different levels and what people like? I mean, if you would want to add on like on the spin side of things, yeah. like definitely Lynx Tour okay. uh, as being like the textured string, like uh, this is super nice. If you want to go completely fancy on it and uh, choosing colors, you should take the uh, TW exclusive <laughs> Lynx Spin Square <laughs> with like a shaved, a shaped main <laughs> and a, a round cross string. But it might be a lot on color I uh, mean, with the blue and orange. Yeah. But definitely a shaped string that's a little bit on the stiffer side gives this racket uh, the extra. Mm -hmm. Or you go like with a super soft one where, where the racket like gets a really pl even a more plusher, Pockets. a mix of crisp and plush. Even yeah. like you can dial it down a little bit with a softer string like Lynx. Even Hawk Power will okay. be very Ooh. interesting, in particular on the Extreme Pro. Like, that would look cool in yes. here, maybe. Yes. Yeah, because it will pull out. Yes. Yep, yep, yeah. you've done it. <laughs> He's like, I've done it, yeah. I've seen it, I know. Um, and what about our, our players that aren't looking to string with Polly? What should they be stringing their team with or their MPL? Well, in, in my opinion, like a good range is always that 50 to 54 pounds, um, kind of that range which I think resonates into 20 to 24 kilos, something like that. In this I don't area. know kilos, yeah. sorry. <laughs> like if it is done by a professional good stringer, you know, that's, that's always crucial. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else? Is there anything else we need to know about these, these extremes? I think we covered everything. I think we talked about uh, all the changes we have done. We have obviously done also some layup work with a carbon fiber. OK, and like talk how a little bit about up. that, because I we, we looked into all the different models and what we wanted, as I said, what we wanted to achieve. So it's always it's it's never like that one thing that you change, whether it's the grommets, the, the, the t that, that overarching technology, the, it's always a mix of things that are going into the racket. So, yeah. And that's what we also did, did here a little bit, changing a little bit stiffnesses 
over the entire racket, so going into various areas. So that, that will be very nerdy stuff right now. I think we don't need to go into well, all I details. Well, I was preparing for this, and you I'm sure you already know this. There's a thread on Talk Tennis that's been there since November, maybe, trying to figure out more information about the extremes and what the wish list is. And so there's people that are looking for all the things. <laughs> but, I mean, they have to be patient <laughs> a little bit because the racket coming is soon. not coming yet. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to throw you for a loop, and I would love for you to talk a little bit about your 4-in-1 machine if you want to. Sure. Yeah, let's, sure. Hear, let's hear about it. Why not? So, so that machine has been in the works for nearly two years. Um, so we wanted to have a machine that, that makes sense for, for the retail environment, and that's easy to handle, easy to carry around, and, and also a good value-price relation. Um, and we wanted to make it work for all racket sports. I mean, Head is obviously known for tennis, but we also are very successful in paddle. We are um, like growing in the world of pickleball mm -hmm. big time. We are very committed to pickleball. And so we see that customizing becomes more and more important for any racket sport. Yeah. And our three-in-one machine was mainly set up for tennis. So okay. we wanted a machine that is also working for all the others. Okay. So with that machine, you can customize a paddle, uh, you can customize a pickleball paddle with it. You can customize a tennis racket, badminton squash, whatever, like whatever, like uh, racket sport you play. Anything. Anything. And on top of it, like uh, we are holding a patent on on the um, <coughs> clamp that actually holds the racket because you can do the swing weight, meaning it simulates the the swing of right. a player, and um, it also measures the torsional stability. People love BMI. that. So, they always want to know. So, so that that's going to be pretty interesting to see. Like we we have it now in the TW tent as well, uh, showing it. Um, and yeah, people are asking a lot of questions about it. I, I've heard a lot of people ask questions. I know we, not myself personally, but I know back in slow, it was yes, uh, we, exciting to get that and yeah, we play were around a, with it. We were on a couple of phone calls with your team as well, <laughs> yeah. like, like going through all of this. And it's, it's, it's exciting and I'm happy that we finally pulled this machine off. It's everything we do, we try to do like good and high quality. <laughs> so it always takes a little bit of time. For sure. And would you say it's something that like even just an at-home stringer would find interest in? Adding? Definitely. That's what we wanted to achieve, that we make it, let's say, accessible for the normal tennis people. So okay. this whole that's cool. customizing is not necessarily just getting a racket from 300 gram to 330 gram. It's also kind of like equalizing your own rackets, you know, like yeah. sometimes it's it's just a little bit too much of the finishing tape of mm -hmm. the grip mm -hmm. or underneath the double sided tape. It's a little bit too much. So you're two, two, three grams too much in your handle or whatsoever that you want to like equalize and balance out. So yes, it's, it's interesting for everyone. Nice. That's awesome. And is there anything else coming out from head that you can give us a little sneak? Yeah, we, we oh, are, okay. we are actually, and I think I mentioned this to you. Um, we are uh, working on a project on strings. So on, on recycled strings, um, we will awesome. include the people on the forum at some point where we will, um, hand out basically two versions of a string and we will have the consumers globally make the selection which version of that string will go like into retail. That's so, so I cool. think I think nobody else has done that yet before. And so I'm, I'm curious of the outcome. And uh, then people, if we choose the one that they voted for, nobody can complain that it's, <laughs> uh, that it's not that's, right. That's the actual. And have you hit the prototypes of this already? Yes, How's yes. It feel? I mean, it's, it's part of it. my role to like <laughs> specifically on the strings. Um, it it will be it will be positioned um, it will be positioned in the um, in the hawk in okay. the hawk line. Uh, we don't have yet a textured string in in the hawk uh, line, so that that's going to be uh, one of the strings that ha will be seven sided, both okay. versions, and then people will try it. And uh, last but not least, and Felix was just throwing it over. I was just reading it. This is uh, one string, and I think people will love this too. Um, this is going to be called Velocity Power. Oh! So we will take Velocity to the next level in terms of power. I think the, the feedback and the success of Velocity has been tremendous, mm -hmm. especially here in the US. 
And what we are doing now, we wanted to give it the extra pop. Like what the, the only feedback we got if somebody was looking for a little bit more was a little bit more power out okay. of velocity. So we try to um, maintain all the benefits of it, but like give it a little bit more pop. Nice. So the outer wrapping will have uh, smaller dimensions, okay. uh, which gives it the extra pocketing and pop. That's awesome. And can you just tell me real quick about ha like head sustainability efforts? Because you guys have been making that stuff yeah. and bags with PET yeah. materials for a while now. Yeah, we, we have the so-called head rethink program mm -hmm. where um, every department in our company is basically looking into every opportunity to either use recycled material, use like uh, bio-based material. We have just been in a, in a, in a, in a fair show uh, for um, biocircular carbon fiber. So we have built the first tennis racket out of biocircular carbon fiber and also the first pickleball racket. So you can check on our um, social channels and, and see it, uh, which is like we have partnered up with a very popular company called Tori, um, which is super interesting, super interesting project. Uh, as you mentioned on bags, we, yeah. we have our recycled uh, PET bag mm -hmm. collection. We're trying to expand this. Um, we are looking into the strings. Also like uh, with you guys, we're, we're working on a project. So every, every department tries to, to find the best ways to be environmental friendly the best we can. Nice, that's awesome. Well, I don't know. Is there anything else that we need to know? What I else can you we, tell I us? I think we have, we have covered a lot right we now. We got a I lot think. in and there, uh, right? I think people will hopefully put some comments out there and once we have time, we can, we can answer questions that might come up. Uh, and it gives everyone an incentive to stay tuned for this string that they're going to have the ability to speak up about. And I think yes. that's exciting. And then these rackets are so amazing. And once they're out, you know you're going to be able to see them from 10 courts away. So yep. it'll be fun to get these play tested and all that good stuff and this is always a good time so thank yeah, you so thank much you. for having me again thanks Michelle. thank you it was and fun as always <laughs> always amazing thanks you guys for watching thanks for joining us thanks for tuning in and happy hitting thank you